transform you if you let it in it'll cover you and carry you turn you away according to the bible the entitlement has many negative consequences it has negative consequences in your relationships. It can damage your relationships. And it can damage your spiritual health. Not only that, entitlement comes with a sense of pride. Let me stay there for a moment. Entitlement is rooted in a prideful point that sees Grace as one's due, rather than grace. Feeling that you are better is a sign that you have a sense of entitlement. Trying to control everyone around you and dominate the situation is a sign that you have a sense of entitlement always going to be seen and heard by others is a sign that you have a sense of entitlement. Never wanting to have small beginnings is a sign that you have a sense of entitlement. People who have a sense of entitlement focus on what is lacking versus what they have. And they always compare themselves to the next person. And this leads to sinful actions. Entitlement can lead to sinful actions such as robbery, anger, murder. Arrogant attitudes is a major part of having a sense of entitlement. So how do we, as Christians, in a world that gives us everything right here, mm -hmm. keep from having a sense of entitlement. Number one is to humble yourself. Feeling humble is the sense that you know you don't deserve to have what you already have. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me see, can I uh, bring it home? Uh, other people don't get upset when they are replaced. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you know, in baseball, they have what they call a pinch hitter. Mm -hmm. The pinch hitter comes in when there's a moment in the game where they absolutely need a hit in order to gain an advantage. And so I, I wonder sometimes, brother, how does the person who's up for bat feel that he can't go, and somebody else has to go who's better than him. It takes an humble person to remain in that situation. Now, the Bible teaches us as Christians that we should avoid all senses of entitlement in our culture, in our home, in our work, that we should put in hard work, not in the sense of gaining an advantage, but in the sense that God wants us to do it that way. The Bible also teaches us that people who are truly entitled really don't understand what they're entitled to. Can I go there? Yes, we are entitled, watch this, y'all, to a one-way ticket to hell. Oh. That's what we're entitled to. If you think about you should have been dead and gone to hell on your first sin, that's your sense of entitlement. Right. So what happens now is that we lose the fear of God, which is simply a reverence and respect for God and the way that we conduct our lives. People who feel entitled begin to be unthankful, reject their blessings, and forget about the goodness and the graciousness of an almighty God. Yes, people who are feeling entitled feel like you owe them something. 
They walk in as if you're supposed to lay out the red carpet. Right. And as I work upon our anniversary, 100 years of being in this spot in East Dallas, the Lord spoke to my spirit and he told me, be careful about the dangers of entitlement. And so I want us, this church today, to understand that we don't get to 100 years just because we've been so good. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody had not read their Bible the way that they should read it. Everybody had not prayed, everybody had not preached or sung. None of those things can measure up to God. It is by His grace and His mercy that we come this fall. Yeah. Watch the movements of the text in Exodus 13 all the way to Exodus 15. God brings a startling multi-stage miraculous deliverance for the children of Israel. It's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. It's basically coming out of slavery, parting the Red Sea, mm -hmm. all the way to the Red Sea, to the River Jordan, from the River Jordan, all the way to Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down mm -hmm. as they walked around. I mean, it's miraculous in all of its ways. The, the pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, their clothes not wearing out, ankles not being swole. I mean, this is miraculous. But it was quickly forgotten. Mm. If ever that was an event that these children of Israel who took part in, shouldn't have forgotten. It should have been how God delivered. In Houston, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like the more God gave, the worse they became. I'm not talking about your children. I'm talking about the children of Israel. It seems like the more the, 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 the good and, and, and the perfect gifts that he was given to them, the worse their attitude got along the way. So before Exodus 15 is completed, Israel has already forgotten about the goodness of God. A few days traveling, and now they're thirsty. And you would think that they would fall on their knees. Thank God for the deliverance and ask him to provide some water, please. But that's not what they did. They grumbled and complained against Moses. Now, let's stop right there. Because, see, you got to understand the Bible. The Bible didn't say that they asked Moses, hey, Moses, where are we going to get some water from? No, that's not what happened. The grumbling and the complaining is the same sense that they had when they saw the Red Sea full of water mm -hmm. and Pharaoh's men were behind them. And they thought they was about to die. They blamed it on Moses. You brought us out of here to die? We could have stayed back in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And that was the same attitude they had after being delivered. When they became thirsty, they looked at Moses and said, man, what is this? Now we need some water. How is it that you're going to lead us out to something and you're not prepared for our journey? And Moses cries out to God, and, and God said, look at that stick over there. It throws it in the water, and the water became suitable to drink. Now, here's the problem, because y'all missed it. Let me try to break it down. Why is it that them asking for water was such an issue with God? Hmm. And let me see, can I help you? Okay. They got to the water. And they said, the water is too bitter. Stop right there. My mama always taught me, babies. Yeah, I heard it too. Yeah, <laughs> babies can't be choosy. So the water is, is bitter. Okay, it is bitter. So instead of asking, do 
you have to just drink the bitter water? Do you have any more water? Any, none? They, they grumbled and, and cried, you can't drink this. And so the reason why it was so profound to me is because you don't understand where they came from. Let me back up a little bit. They started out real good. In Exodus 14, when they looked back and they saw the sea come back together, and they saw the Egyptian lying on the shore dead, the Bible said Moses, he started singing. Oh, it was this big long song. Oh, he was just singing away. And all the children of Israel. And then Miriam took over. His sister, she took over. And the ladies started coming up with their tambourines. Oh, they're happy, happy, happy. In Exodus 14. And the Bible says they promised that day that they would trust Moses and trust God in all of their days. But as soon as they get to Exodus 15, and they get a little thirsty, all of a sudden they forgot about what God has done. Watch this. Grateful moments only happen every now and then when God was faithful the whole time. Okay, let, let me try. Uh, let me see. As soon as their circumstances turned back, they forgot about how good God had already been. It's as if the present trials blotted out and negated God's past track record of faithfulness. Who am I talking to? It seems like every time you get some bad news, you forget that God has delivered you 30, 40, 50, 60 years up until now. Every time you get the news, you think that the devil is going to take you out. Mm -hmm. And you just forgot about the goodness of our God. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Here's why God was really bad. Y'all ready for it? Okay. So, but I was alive when I heard this in Sunday school. I really didn't get it. But God had to speak to me. This is why he was so upset. Here they go. They're grateful for everything coming out. Mm -hmm. They get to the water. Mm -hmm. Watch this, Brother Martin. They don't know what the water tastes like. They see water, and they're happy, happy, happy. Mm -hmm. right. And they start drinking the water. Right. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Before they say thank you. Did y'all get it? See, I heard, I read it. That's how they knew the water was bitter. They forgot to say they grace before they start drinking the water. So God had to teach them a lesson. You've been thankful so far, all of a sudden, you get a paycheck above average, and all of a sudden, you forget to say thank you for the job. Okay, okay, let, let me try it again. Uh, it, it was those 10 lepers that taught us that. In Luke 17, Jesus, he heals 10. Only one comes back just to say thank you. Jesus looks at him and says, okay, that's good and all, but where are the other nine? Mm -hmm. That's my question to us. Mm. Are we the one? Mm -hmm. Or are we part of the nine? Mm. Because it was that one that, that came back just to say thank you. Yeah. Because thank you means that you didn't have to but I'm so glad that you did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Every time you wake up in the morning and you think that your blood is just warm and warm, just because that's just the way it's supposed to go, and your heart is beating 72 beats a minute just because that's just the way things go in life, and you wake up and you don't say thank you, oh, it's an ungrateful situation. Okay, here, here we go, here we go. Another danger of feeling entitled is that entitlement consumes your walk. Yeah. That means everywhere you go, it consumes you. Ungrateful people are not just ungrateful to God, but they are ungrateful 
to the family, to the friends, to the co-workers, and especially to strangers. You can tell an ungrateful person even in the church. <laughs> Watch the movies on the text, y'all ready? <laughs> I'm in church. 100 years in this building. My whole family went here. Everybody I know go here. Mm -hmm. And that's my seat. <laughs> oh, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Y'all ready for a problem? Yeah. When I come in Sunday morning yeah. and somebody is sitting in my seat, yeah. it's the ungrateful person that gets upset about it. Wow. Does everybody understand that? Oh, somebody say, preach, young man, preach. And yeah, I believe I will. Even if y'all don't say it, I'm going to say it today. Yeah. 100 years ago, we sit up here and act like the children of Israel, like God owes us something. Okay? Watch this, y'all. We, as a generation, have gotten into an entitled position. I don't know if it's because we live in America, the land of the free. I don't know what it is. But it seems like this is the most we've ever had and the worst attitude we've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> we blame others for injustices mm -hmm. that's extremely our fault. We live in a culture where there's spiritual entitlement, like we deserve all the great things of God. And if something doesn't go our way, we feel robbed or deprived. Even if a person gets in our way, we feel like they did it on purpose. Watch this, y'all. Reverend William Bolcher in his writings, he wrote, The Ten Cannots. This is what he said. You cannot help people permanently by doing for them what they could and should do for themselves. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. 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 You cannot help people permanently by doing for them what they could and should be doing for themselves. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that a man does, does not work. <laughs> Don't you go back there and pick up a part at all. <laughs> you do not eat. Okay, okay, let, let me see. Uh, the more you give entitled people, the more you give them, watch this, they, that reinforces their conviction that you owe them that anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, and I, I used to think that a whooping was just because you got bust. <laughs> Trust me, I got a lot of whooping, but that, that's another subject. Uh, but the whooping from a loving parent is not just because he or she caught you. It was to instill a behavior in you when they're not there to watch you. Are y'all understanding this? Okay. Uh, if you want your child to behave, it's not about threatening them. It's about, watch this, doing what thus said the Lord. He said, raise them up in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Entitlement is not a life of gimme, gimme, gimme. It's a life of service and gratitude. Yeah. Oh, God, we're going to talk this out. Yeah. Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes. And his love endures forever. Now, I'm raised up in Baptist church. One verse that says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his grace endures forever. But in the Baptist church, for us, we, we, we go by the King James Version. Mm -hmm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy and do it for him. See, I'm from that school of thought. Because mercies mean that you done something wrong and you deserve punishment. You should be glad and just give thanks to the Lord 
that he's not giving you the punishment that you deserve. Yeah. That, that's the school of thought I'm from because in verse 6 of that same passage, the psalmist said, for their deliverance, he said, let them give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because he delivered them out of the desert wasteland. Mm -hmm. He's talking about his forefathers and how God delivered them. The same people who were studying now in Exodus. He said, let them give thanks unto the Lord. It's God's will for us to give thanks in all that we do. The Bible says, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So when you believe that you're entitled to better treatment than others, the rules don't apply to you, mm -hmm. watch this, you're going to suffer in the long run. Right. It's best that you get rid of the entitlement when you're small. Right. Own up to teenage, even young adult, because once you become full grown, <laughs> now the entitlement turns to issue. It seems like hard work and commitment is an outdated antiquated value. Instead of working hard, we work the system. Where did this come from? And how can we escape? And today, we think that God is a genie in a bottle. That he is a cosmic errand boy. All we got to do is just pray for what we want, ask God, and he's going to give it to us. We don't understand that God is a good God. No matter what is going on. That's why I like the Baptist church, because we say God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Okay, watch this. Could it be, could it be that God is too good to us? Yeah. Could it be that we're small? And we have this sense of entitlement because it gives us so much. I'm in Romans 8 and 32, watch the movements of the text. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? What more can he give us? And here we are with an entitlement attitude. We owe God everything. Mm -hmm. yes. Our lives, our financial resources, our gifts, our talents. And we must realize where our blessings come from. From the least to the greatest, all of this comes from God. Right. All he says is that <coughs> all the things okay. give thanks. Whoa. Now, this started in the statistics. Did you know that America's lowest income earners are richer than the majority of the world's population? Amen. That's right. Okay. But we feel entitled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that broke me down, but thinking is serving the unhoused community. Mm -hmm. When I looked at it, Sometimes we, we serve them, and if they get an attitude, we get an attitude with them. <laughs> How are they going to get an attitude? <laughs> and we giving them something free. I mean, no, it's just, it gets real ridiculous. <laughs> but one day, one person observing and taught me something. I'm driving, and the person before me must have given the unhoused person a candy bar. <laughs> And what I saw next really changed my life. He had a candy bar. Mm -hmm. And he said, His grace only can. Yeah. Yeah. Now that wasn't the problem. Yeah. The problem was me with my arrogant self. Yeah. I'm sitting in the car mad yeah. because McDonald's didn't give me hot fries. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have y'all ever been there? Yeah. Yeah, I like hot fries too. Don't play with that. I'm sitting there looking at how ungrateful I was. Mm -hmm. 
the entitlement I thought I had, and this guy gave thanks for a candy bar, watch this, that had already been eaten. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to give thanks until you give thanks for something that somebody else had already eaten off of. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. You must diagnose your heart in order to get rid of entitlement. You got to ask yourself several questions. Because right now, you might not even think that you have a sense of entitlement. Let me see, can I help you though? <coughs> have you ever felt discontent? Like what you have is not good enough. Have you ever felt disappointment? Like what just happened to you shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. Have you ever compared your situation to the next person's situation? If you've done that before, then you might have a sense of entitlement. So your heart is right, and God is guiding that heart to wherever it is that he feel like it should go. And then all of a sudden, when we go to a place that we don't feel right, our heart changes. Let me try it like this thing, because y'all look at me real funny. When your heart is right, and God chooses to say no or wait, you can trust all of his answers because they're good and they're love. Mm. Parents to children. Children, whenever parents give you something, no matter what it is, there's always room to say thank you. Right. Mm. Uh, right. Y'all remember the prophet's son? Mm -hmm. The prophet's son, right now, mm -hmm. the reason why he was so ungrateful is because you're supposed to wait until your daddy dies <coughs> to get your inheritance. Mm -hmm. He comes up with his arrogant self and says, Daddy, give me my inheritance now. But mm -hmm. what he was really saying was this. Daddy, I wish you were dead. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. And so whenever we don't say thank you, watch this, y'all. Here's the arrogant part. We're trying to take over God's anointing. Watch this. People who are entitled try to outgive and outdo so that they'll never have to say thank you. Because people who are entitled don't want to say thank you because they feel like that's pushing them beneath what they feel like they deserve. And anytime you don't want to say thank you and God has given you everything, you're trying to take away his anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proof of God's anointing is to hear his children say thank you. Mm -hmm. So children, the next time you get something from your parents, mm -hmm. whether you can buy what you really wanted to buy or whether you have to say it, if you don't say thank you, that's taken away from their anointing over your life. Let me try to end this. Christ is the only person that is entitled. He didn't deserve to bear the cross. He didn't deserve to carry all of our sins on his shoulder. Yet he chose to give up his entitlement just so we can live. Philippians 2, 5 and 8, if you don't believe is what it says. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count it equal with God a thing to grasp, but emptied himself by taking a form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even 
the death over the cross. Let me show you if you will. The moment they arrested him, he was on. He didn't have resistance to an arrest on his charge. He wasn't trying to run. He wasn't even trying to hide. He allowed the enemy to do what they were going to do because it didn't affect who he was. Even when Peter cut off that soldier's head, Jesus put it back on to get rid of the evidence covering Peter in that garden. When they found him guilty, you got to understand, I couldn't have done it. When they found him guilty of all charges, it was the people's choice of war. <laughs> but how? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but there, there, there's some folks I, 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 I just have a feeling that y'all feel like me sometimes. Mm -hmm. That if you've got a lot for somebody, the least they can do is appreciate. Uh, here he is. I know there's 5,000 people in that audience, mm -hmm. that still has fish bones mm. picking out of their teeth. Mm -hmm. Some of them still have the bread in their hand. Mm -hmm. There is a woman with an issue of blood that she's good now. Mm -hmm. There are some folks who couldn't see now looking right at everybody. Yeah. All of them in the audience. And when he's standing up there in the middle, mm -hmm. hiding on one side, Barabbas on the other side. And Pilate asked the question, who do you want me to set free? Jesus or Barabbas? All those folks who I just named, all of them looked and said, free Barabbas. That couldn't have been me. There's no way I'm going to continue to go to that cross knowing that you don't appreciate what I did. Yeah. Ain't you glad your pastor named Jesus? <laughs> but the humbleness that he had, knowing that these folks don't like him and he's going to do it anyway, that shows us that he gave up his sense of entitlement. Okay, can, can I keep going? Yeah. The moment the first person put their hands on, Touched him. Mm -hmm. He could have yeah. ended his life. Yeah. But he taught us mm -hmm. to turn the other cheek. Oh, that would hurt. Yeah. He, he taught us that if, if they sue you, let them have the cloak and everything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It was the color purple that taught us that this life be over soon, heaven lasts always. <laughs> But I'm looking at it like, how can you go through all of this and not retaliate? That's because he gave up his sense of entitlement. Yeah. Because entitled people have to say something back. Mm -hmm. They have to ball up their fists and get in. Watch this, can I keep going? Yeah. When they put the nails in his hand, yeah. when they put the nails in his feet, he could have stopped the whole procession. Mm -hmm. He could have said, oh, that hurts, uh-uh. We uh -uh, we we going to stop this right now. But he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw on me unto me. Yeah. If he never goes to the cross, he's never lifted up. If he's never lifted up, we wouldn't be in church today. Watch this. Can I go for him? He's hanging on the cross. And the last thing you need when you're going through something, y'all can relate to this, is somebody talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh -uh. He is laying there trying to catch his breath just to hold on a little while longer. And somebody who isn't nailed to the cross, he tied, said, if you be the Christ, save yourself and us. Now, 
I'm so glad that he didn't look over there and go, what you say? <laughs> because he got rid of his sense of entitlement. Because the other one did it for him. Uh-uh, who's back? Wait a minute. He don't deserve this. We deserve this. He said, well, forget about him. Remember me. And Jesus, with some of his last breath, said, you will be with me in paradise. Because you don't have a sense of entitlement. You don't feel like you deserve anything, so you deserve everything. Watch this. Can I keep going? So, he's hanging on the cross. And you would think the soldier pinched him in the side. He said, truly, this man must be the Son of God. When the blood and water come streaming down, yeah. but more than had the nerve to be on the ground, gathering for his road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes a big person to say what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It takes a person who got rid of that entitlement to forgive somebody who's still doing it to you. And so now, can I go for it? The Bible said that he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. Didn't he die? He died. They laid him down in a borrowed tomb. All night Friday, all of a sudden, you would think that he would be upset about what happened to him. Because you, after doing that to me, wouldn't want to see me early Sunday morning. But the Bible said early Sunday morning, he got up. This is what the preachers would say. With all power in his hand. How did he use that power? He used it to bless us. He said, all power has been given to me. Now I'm giving it to you. If he doesn't get up, we don't get up. If he doesn't reign in heaven, we don't go to reign with him in heaven. Aren't you glad that he got rid of his entitlement just for us? So he's calling us, but they can not to have a sense of entitlement, but to have a sense of joy, mm -hmm. a sense of grace, mm -hmm. mercy, love, service, without a sense of entitlement. God yeah. bless you. You may keep you as my man.